Welcome back to Switched to Linux. And today we will talk about some upcoming Linux Mint theme changes. Linux Mint once again has demonstrated that it listens to its users better than any other distribution. You get like the Ubuntu, um, they just, you know, hey, whatever the corporate says, let's just plow along in our corporate direction and who cares what any of the other folks say and you get your Debian which just move like the speed of a glacier making the uh, decisions on the governing body and Linux Mint just looks back and goes hmm interesting we thought we were going to do something neat here and uh, it turns out nobody liked it let's revert and change course that has been Linux Mint's plan a long time and it has served them very well and kept themselves having the most uh, fundamentally loyal Linux users. And that's really what we're going to talk about today in the March update. Of course, these come out, you know, usually the, the end of the month, beginning of the next month. So this was released April 3rd, the March update. Go figure. But that's okay, you know. And so what he's going to do is he's going to talk about some of the changes in the upcoming Linux Mint 21.2 change. And um, inside of that, we're going to see that there were a few change courses. But most of what is changing here is stylistic theming changes, stuff to make things look and work better. Now, there's going to be a couple places where some things maybe don't look as concise, everything looking perfectly laid out, fluid within everything but they wanted to make sure first and foremost everything worked and that has been a problem with some things as more and more users are using darker themes mixed desk desktop themes and things like that and so that's really what the Linux Mint team was focusing on doing so they start with talking about some of the improvements from Linux Mint 21.1 Mint Y was turned into a less extenuated theme with vibrant colors and new place icons, which people by and large didn't like. I liked them, but a lot of people by and large didn't. The old look was provided via Mint Y Legacy for people who didn't like the changes. And that's another great thing Linux Mint has always done is if you don't like the changes, they've always have that backwards compatibility. Even still, they have still have the old traditional panel layout and they have the new, more modern way of doing panel layout. I like the look of the modern. I don't like the behavior of it. So I either use the traditional and modify the theming or use the modern and uh, modify the, the behavior, both of which are still perfectly capable of doing. And then the third, a selection of third-party themes was added. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk here about some of these issues. So a few things caught our attention. A huge variety of themes and color variants created clutter and made it harder for users to locate a particular theme. This has been one of the problems inside of Linux Mint is just the vast number of theming options uh, that are available to you as you are going through. So just having a, a brief look at uh, my current Linux Mint desktop here, this are, are the theming options. And if I go in here and pull these out, I mean, I don't think uh, this computer, I don't think I've added anything. Have I added my own? Um, yeah, this is slightly my own, uh, my own slight customization, but I haven't added any new icons or, or buttons or things like that. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on. And that is one of the downsides Linux Mint has always had is a lot of things going back and forth. And so they wanted to get rid of a little bit of the clutter, but maintaining the, the old, um, the old background, the old styles for those that like them. So some icon themes, uh, worked well with some control themes, but not others. Welcome screen provides a quick way to switch from light to dark. One color, only problems it works with Mint Y theme and only in the Linux Mint distribution. So while the change was meant to be made to Cinnamon, it generally only works inside of here. Now, I'm hoping that this means that the next version is going to have a standalone theming change because even inside of, uh, even inside of Linux Mint here, as we look at the various options for the, the theming, that how the colors are, really the only place to find these is inside of the welcome screen. 
there's no place to pick your theme settings outside of the welcome screen. And that is certainly a problem that they have. So I'm hoping that they move this out of the welcome screen and have a specific Cinnamon Themes app. And it does sound like that's what they're doing. So we'll see if that actually is what comes to fruition. So they decided uh, to... Uh, a design to a solution which could work for a better theme in any other distribution and which would make it much easier to browse and pick without having to go through long lists of installed themes and without worrying about compatibility. So this actually made uh, a few other changes. Oh, and the strike place icons weren't as popular as we had imagined. This is something we got early in our feedback, and we worked on that too. I liked these. I did think they were cool looking, but most people didn't. So, oh well, I will uh, give up my, my uh, stripey icons uh, to the sacrifice to the altar. Of course, I believe I can still actually use them if I want to. Uh, I might have to install a separate icon pack if you want them. I don't know if I care enough to do that, but... It's just an option available. So they did uh, take out the brown. Brown and sand are shades of the same color, the same hue. So they're introducing color tones. So one of them had to go. They took the stripe out. The other thing they did is the mono icons were causing a problem. So... Uh, one of the cool things about the, the GTK, the toolkit used by most Linux Mint applications, is how it supports symbolic icons. They're designed to provide good contrast and be recognizable in all sizes. GT, uh, GTK dramatically changes the color of these icons based on the background color which is behind them. So here is the copy menu. So you'll see that it does some nice changes based on uh, the various colors available. So this is from the Nemo menu. So here is um, the Nemo menu is a symbolic icons. You can see the icons change color and goes from black to white. The menu is hovered and it matches the label. In comparison, look at this menu. This is from the Kaja menu. It uses a normal icon known as a full color as an icon which rendered just this way. GTK doesn't change the colors dynamically. Now here's the problem is when you use these on dark themes, it caused this problem. The icons would disappear. And so using the new icon set, if you are on a dark theme, it converts them to lighter. If you're on a light theme, it converts them to darker automatically. So this means that no more buttons will disappear. And I have encountered this on some instances on Caden Live, where depending on the theme you're using, your icons will completely disappear. And that's not super conducive to easy editing if you're doing video editing on a regular basis. And so I've had to compromise and use different themes I may not want to do because at least everything is functional. And that is certainly one of the going forward problems that they do talk about it. Uh, to prevent this kind of issue on all applications, we develop symbolic icons. This ensures they look fine with any themes, whether themes are dark, uh, light, or dark, and dark. So basically, if you're doing a light, a dark, or a mixed theme. An application which uses full color icons will only work well on some themes. An application which uses symbolic icons will work well on any themes. Until now, Mint Y provided monochrome full color icons. That was a problem for this shift into more people using darker icon themes on a more uh, more consistent basis. Something that has really just happened in the last five years in computing. So uh, this is done to make full color icons applications look nice. First, it only worked with light themes, so each color variant had to be duplicated to provide both a light and a dark theme. This is where you'll see in GIMP, it'll have a series of different icon colors available based to basically to help them through that transition. So you would choose the icon pack that worked well inside of your system. I like going back and just keeping on using the full color icons rather than the, the symbolic ones personally. But uh, they have solutions for each one of them, and that's what GIMP was doing during that really transition period where some people are using light themes, some people are using dark themes. You had a problem with some of the original icons not showing up if you wanted to use a dark theme, for example. So uh, here is what they're doing with transmission. One of the few applications that still requires on full color icons. It looks nice because Mint Y provides monochrome icons, which will look similar to the symbolic ones, but this application's 
features the same theme compatibility issues as Kaja. So in Linux Mint 21.2, we'll be removing the monochrome icons and all dark icon themes and applications that still use them. So full color icons will default to Arueda. So this is where we're going to have a few of the problems. A few of these applications like transmission, we're going to lose the theming that matches the rest of the Linux Mint core system here. And it's going to default back to the full color. Why? Simply because of the way transmission is written. And so I think another one that has this at least as an option is LibreOffice where you can keep these or you can use symbolic icon themes as a few different options. So we're going to see a few uh, a few applications revert back to the full color icon so they may not look quite as consistent within the system. But as they say here, whether or not they look better is subjective, but at least they will work everywhere. And that is a problem that I've encountered on a few applications in this transitional period where icon themes may not show up. And they're seeking to resolve that the best that they can. Now, Cinnamon Styles, the next iteration of Cinnamon will introduce a new concept called Styles. A style has had three modes, mixed, dark, and light. Each of these modes can contain color variants. A variant is a combination of themes which will work well together. The idea behind styles, modes, and variants is to make it really simple to choose uh, to switch to something that looks great and to quickly browse what's there no matter on individual themes or without having to find elements which match each other. So now and it does look like, as I said, this is a separate option inside of the theme settings, no longer embedded inside the welcome screen, but now in your theme settings, which means using cinnamon on another Linux distribution should give you the ability to use these moving forward. And as soon as this version of Cinnamon rolls out and it's rolled out to uh, Arch, I'll go ahead and test it out as my Endeavor OS system uses, uh, uses Cinnamon and uh, I will be able to see those changes. So here we have a style. So we have a Weta, we have a mixed appearance, we have a dark, we have a light. There is an advanced settings and they don't give us any detail about what is behind that advanced settings inside of here. Although some of the text down below alludes that you can do a lot of customization inside of it. But that is yet to be seen from here. So here is uh, if you pick your style mint Y. Now we have color variation. So it looks like we have a few options for varying tones. That is sweet. I do uh, look forward to seeing how that looks. So here's your mixed, dark, and light. Here's your style, mint Y. You can switch between styles, modes, and variants with a click of a few buttons. If you want to tune things or select a combination of themes which isn't proposed, you can click on advanced settings and get back to the familiar theme settings. So what I'm understanding that they are saying is, uh, from saying this, is as we jump back on over to the desktop, when we go into themes... Right now, this is what our themes is going to look like. Mint, you basically choose your uh, mint Y, mint X, mint dark. You can choose your icons here. You can choose your buttons here. You can choose your mouse cursors here. And you can choose your basic desktop panels here. It sounds as though this is going to become what is inside of the advanced theme when you click advanced, but we'll have a more simplified version allowing you to pick the basic overall theme style and then the color pack inside of it. Mint Y Legacy is renamed Mint Y, so it's no Mint Y Legacy. It's going to be the same as Mint L for those that like the older styles. And then they add some two-tone icons. The stripes are gone in place uh, on place icons, and each color receives beautiful two-tone icons instead. I do like these better than the stripe icons, to be fair. Uh, I do like the stripes, but, you know, I, again, I don't really get super hung up over the specific icons usually. But here's some, the two-tone colors. So well, they'll have the, the pinks, they'll have the blues, the teals. But they've also added ones based uh, very similar to the, uh, and basically uh, inspired by the Ubuntu icons, which is the Yarrow theme derived from Papyrus. So you can get icons that look like Ubuntu if you want to trick people into thinking you're really using the brand new uh, Ubuntu cinnamon and be like, oh, this is so amazing. I was like, wow, this is amazing. You go, ha ha, fool you, Linux Mint still here, buddy. So uh, that's what they have inside of there. Here's your uh, Cyan and um, Aqua 
I guess that's teal, teal and cyan aqua. Here's your uh, aqua and I guess blue themes. And here is they do have an icon here with a stripe in it. So there you go. So that is what Linux Mint is up to in their latest changes. Once again, they're really demonstrating that they are a distribution that listens to their users. The biggest factor, people overwhelmingly did not like the stripey folders. So the stripey folders have been taken to the barn out back. They've added a nice new theming option inside of this that hopefully now everybody, because th this is the one thing I think they could really do to bolster Cinnamon. Cinnamon is a very ugly desktop environment to install vanilla on top of any distribution other than Linux Mint. It is fairly ugly. If this is working the way I think it's going to be working, then any Linux distribution utilizing the Cinnamon desktop environment is going to have a beautiful experience out of the box, which is certainly a better experience than people get right now. So I can't wait for this new version of Cinnamon to come out. I'll look at it in Linux Mint once it comes out, and I will also have a look at it on Arch or probably not Debian. I mean, that'll take 10 years, but uh, I'll look at it on Arch as soon as it comes out. Shots fired, I know, I know. Hey, I like Debian too, just, just saying. Anyway, guys, uh, that's what Linux Mint is up to in their next upcoming release. I believe they this is scheduled, slated to be, come out in June, so we'll keep an eye out for, for that happening in June. With that, thanks for watching, and we will see you all next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.